I want to ask you something that uh, whenever I ask for forgiveness uh, in front of Allah, I become very uh, sad and sometimes cry as well in in state of salah, uh, and I'm I get really motivated, really motivated that I won't commit a sin. But as soon as I go out and join my work or uh, meet with my friends or I have alone time, okay, so I commit sins. Even though uh, I just uh, 15 or 20 minutes ago I asked for forgiveness. So uh, previously it was not the case. Previously when after uh, before two or three years ago I used to uh, ask for forgiveness and this this was the motivation factor which used to uh, carry me along a week or a month or maybe three months. But now it's only for 15 or 20 minutes. So I really am depressed that uh, most of my time is in the state of sin and I just have 15 or 20 or maybe one hour or one day of forgiveness so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you and help us all and may he guide you and guide us all my brother it's a very important point and we have to take it seriously it is a concern firstly your environment plays a big role in determining what is going to happen after you've engaged in tawbah so if I've asked Allah for forgiveness uh, from a certain sin and nothing has changed in my environment the, the chances of me falling back into that are probably greater because I asked Allah to forgive me but everything that led me to commit those sins is still around me so together with asking Allah small changes need to happen let's become regular with Salah let's start becoming in the company of better people perhaps let's listen constantly to some talk that's motivating Wallahi it helps a lot a lot if you listen to something that motivates you the Quranic recitation the translation translation of the Quran, a good lecture, whatever else motivates you, it will help you so much. Keep it constant and keep the dhikr of Allah on your tongue and in your heart. Because if you remember Allah a lot, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, it's very, very powerful. It will actually remind you of your duty unto Allah. Similarly, what's important is you, if your heart is stuck in the house of Allah, like the hadith describes, Rajulun qalbuhu mu'allakum bil masajid, a man whose heart is stuck in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you are constantly concerned about the next salah, and you arrive a little bit early in the masjid, you make your wudu, that will help you a lot. It will bring up about so much calmness. And sometimes we work in an environment that is uh, perhaps, you know, not so encouraging of our salah. Maybe we have maids who are not too bothered. They may be not be Muslim at all. It might be a workplace that may not be encouraging, you know, a person to fulfill their salah on time. It's up to us to find a way and to, to build a, you know, a, a method of how I'm going to work and how I will find my mo moments for salah, who I will read salah with. What I have found very beneficial is when you are more than one, then you and, and you think similar, it's far easier for you to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, if we are moving two people, the minute the time for salah comes, you look at each other and you say, time for salah. It's done. When you're alone, sometimes you say, okay, let me find the next masjid. And then you're looking for it. Shaitan might come and make you delay and something might happen. So it's important for us to establish a whole, uh, you know, range of items that would inshallah uh, you progress. Like I've said, I've given just a few options. Uh, we ask Allah's forgiveness and at the same time ensure your environment, your friends, whatever you listen to, uh, your habits and so on, inshallah, it can change. But there's one last point I want to say. You know, you might find it strange, but it's reality. If your tawbah is making you motivated for 20 minutes, seek tawbah after 20 minutes again and get another 20. You know, it's like a parking ticket. You put it one hour later, you need to put a bit more. Another hour later, otherwise you get a fine. So it, before, like you say, and wallahi, I, I, I salute your, your courage to have said this thing open. But it happens to all of us that sometimes, you know, you need a bit of a recharge of a battery. I spoke about it, giving in the example of the phone, that the battery dies or it comes low. When it gets to 10%, it tells you to recharge. Same applies with us. When our, when our you know, that toba and the, the feeling we felt is, dry, is driving a little bit low, that boost we need, plug it in again. Go to the masjid, meet a good man, meet someone. You know, do something good. Try and read a good book, motivation, the Quran, the recitation. Some
something that motivates you, keep it going. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all and may He make us from amongst those who can be motivated to do good. Wallahi, you are so correct. It's very difficult in this environment of materialism. Everything is about money. Everything is about perfume. Everything is about lovely things and flashy items. Everything is about the latest and the latest in such a way that we forget to turn to Allah. And by the time we, we, we start gaining focus, you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. We don't want to be from amongst those who've died in the condition that we haven't yet got that focus. And that's why we have the talk this evening. There are so many things that I, I wanted to say, honestly, but time just flew because I was thinking, subhanAllah, ya Allah, I will say, I will start saying whatever I have and inshallah we'll keep the rest for another time perhaps. So many things that I, I haven't said that I wanted to say this evening, but a little bit at a time. Jazakallah khair, my brother. That was like, it's right. It's going to be very difficult for us to keep up and not sin against God. It's very, very because this, this technology age is making it so, so difficult. Because new things are being invented, you know, peer pressure, people are eager to buy the latest things, people are eager to look good, people are eager to even live a fake life to, to please people. So, at the point in time, it can be hard for us to focus on God. We can lose track. But at the same time, no matter how you want to lose track, always have it in mind that you came on this earth for a purpose. And major, the major purpose God brought us to this earth is to serve Him and to also, you know, serve humanity. Serve Him, serve humanity. That is, serve Him, then do good deeds, show love, show care. That is the major reason God sent us on this earth. But because of the hustle and burden in which we have to survive and eat, we have, to, so we, have, we have to work, we have to involve ourselves in social, you know, activities, you know, all because of the worldly pressure, the pressure that these social activities give us, it makes us forget the reason why we are on earth. It makes us, you know, lose track of who, who we are and what we are supposed to do on earth. Yes, it's very hard for you to sin today, you repent and you not, yeah, a lot of times that most of us will sin today, we we'll ask God for mercy, we we'll pray, next minute we will sin again. Sin is sin, and there are different types of sin. Even though you, you are not the you know, partying type, you are not the clubbing type, just you talking to your neighbor anyhow, or, or looking down your neighbor anyhow, or insulting your neighbor anyhow, it can be considered as a sin. Because you insulting someone, Yes, if the person insults you, you know, sometimes you don't have to be quiet about that, but, there's, but there's, sometimes there's a way you can resolve issue. But if you look down on your neighbor, you castigate people, you know, you have been an hypocrite, that kind of thing is sin. Sin is sin. But different ways we sin day in day. Sometimes we might not even acknowledge it or we might not even notice that we've sinned against God because of the way we have normalized it on this earth. We have normalized it in our life that, oh, well, I beg, it's normal, God will forgive me. You know that kind of thing that you know that, oh, some, some of the sins you know you've seen. And sometimes you ask God for me, sometimes you be like, oh, God is merciful, forgive me. Why sometimes it will be, be part of you that you not even know that you've seen. You to be, you normalize it completely. So I love the way you spoke. You said, no matter, maybe you should change your environment. Change the kind of friends you keep. If you know what is making you sin, sometimes we ourselves make ourselves to sin. We, we, we are the, our own problem. That is you. You are your own problem yourself for sinning. If you are the problem, sit yourself there and ask, what am I doing wrong? Why, am I, why, why do I keep doing this? What attracts me to this for me to keep sinning against God? Then work on it. I know it might take time for you to work on it because... It's process. So then work on yourself. Then after working on yourself, you see, you know, with time, you tend to do things to please God before pleasing yourself. Most, some people please God first. Anything they want to do, they do it because they want to please God. They don't do it because they want to please humans or they want to please themselves. Why some of us, we do things to please ourselves first before we remember that God is God that even brought us on this earth. We do this to please ourselves first. So, if you know that, oh, what is making you sin is so, uh, worldly desires, flashy things, friends, environment, try to adjust on that. I'm not saying you should be moving from one environment to the other. 
where's the money for you for you to be packing from one house to the other there's a way you can cut it off you know there's a way you adjust things and make things work that was a beautiful one thank you so much for watching guys i'll see you in the next one